Personalised medicine in Parkinson's disease is the way in which the world is going. This is not going to happen quickly, but we're going to stop treating Parkinson's patients as though they all have exactly the same deep disease for exactly the same reasons, and we're going to start treating them as individual patients with individual sets of symptomatology. And for that, we need the right drugs to treat these people as individuals. Everybody's favourite slide, including mine, the conclusions. It's a complex disease. Multiple transmitter systems are affected. Motor and non-motor symptoms occur. And for this, you need to find unique ways of treatment. Current treatment is focused on single pharmacological targets. We need to employ drugs that have both dopaminergic and non-dopaminergic components. And what we want to do is improve treatment strategies such that you can get motor and non-motor under control at the same time. You can improve quality of life, reduce pill burden, and not have the telephone ringing so often when patients are phoning up about particular symptoms of the disease. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Professor General, for this uh, provoking uh, lecture. If there are any questions or comments for Professor General? Well, if not, I would ask you something. So, That's the role of the chairman, <laughs> so you have to ask a question. <laughs> sure. So, is it known what, if there are any mechanisms to regulate the uh, type of dopaminergic receptors at the neuronal level, let's say in the medium spiny neuron? So, can anything shift a neuron from having D1 to D2, or is it known? Um, no, it's, 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 not, it's not really known. In fact, we, we still argue about which dopamine receptors are located on which medium spiny neurons. There, you, there's this view that all D1 receptors are on the direct output pathway, and all D2 receptors are on the indirect stratal output pathway. This, this is clearly wrong. This is clearly incorrect because you can modulate the function of uh, D1 uh, receptors by playing with D2 receptors. And it's quite clear there are some D1 receptors on the indirect output pathway, there are some D2 receptors on the direct output pathway, and there are also uh, now thought to be another series of neurons which clearly have about 50% of each receptor on them. So we, we haven't even got the, the physiology, we haven't got the, the, the anatomy right yet. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Well, if not, we do thank you again, and uh, we proceed, because we're a little bit in delay, and uh, 